Let's take a look at practice quiz for standard eight on log functions. Number one wants us to graph it, identify the transformations from the parent function, and identify the key characteristics. So first, let's get it into Desmos. We have y equals log base three. So you can just type log underscore three. And in this menu of functions in Desmos, I can find under the calculus tab, the log with that little base, and I can type that in. But using your laptop keyboard is a little easier because you can just do log, like L-O-G, and then underscore to get that little base in the right spot. So it looks like a subscript. So let me just change the color so that stands out a little bit better. And then once we type it in, we can quickly figure out the x-intercept just by clicking on it. And it looks like it's located at 2.30. So we can just round off those threes to be 2.3. And then it's right there at the x-axis. Then it does not have a y-intercept. So let's just put none. And then what I can see is it looks like the shift to the right, 2, has caused the vertical asymptote to shift from 0 over to 2. And I can see that on my graph as well. Notice if I type in x equals 2, it'll line right up with my graph. That shows me that that is the asymptote. So I'm going to make that a dashed line to make it look a little nicer. So let's connect all those things. It went right to, so that's a transformation that occurred. And when it goes right to, it's going to cause the domain to start at 2 and then go to the right forever. But it won't go any further to the left past the 2. 2 is as far left as it'll go. And then the asymptote is also connected to all those things. So at right 2, the domain starts with 2. And the asymptote is at x equals 2. And then the range goes with how low the graph goes, which is down forever. So that's negative infinity. And then how high it will go is forever as well. So that's positive infinity. Now the only other thing we need to write is there's one more transformation. This plus 1 out back outside of the grouping symbol will make this shift up 1. Okay, so that's it for number 1. Let's look at number 2. We want to rewrite the following expressions using log properties. So in the first one, we want to condense the log expression. So the first thing to do is move the coefficients to become powers. So we write log base b of x squared plus log base b. And I don't need my graphing calculator anymore, so I'm going to move that out of the way. Log base b of y cubed. They are adding together, so that means I need to multiply for my next step. So log base b of x squared times y cubed. You can just write it like that, or if you want to put parentheses around it, you can. Then in the next part of this question, we want to expand the log expression. So this is log base m of x to the fourth over y squared. So I want to say log base m of x to the fourth minus log base m of y squared. So they each get a log because I'm expanding it now. And I'm subtracting because it was dividing. And then the only other thing I need to do is move the exponents out front so they become coefficients on the log. So I have 4 log base m of x minus 2 log base m of y. And then that would be it for number 2. Moving on to number three, I need to solve for x. Mm -hmm. So I only have one log. That means I need to rewrite it in exponential form. So I'm going to say that's 3 squared equals 2x plus 1. And then 3 squared is 9. And I can just solve it like any other linear equation and subtract 1, and I get 8. And then I can say 8 equals 2x. And then divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 4. You can also check your answer. So you could ch check it by plugging that back in the calculator. You could say log base 3 of 2 <laughs> times 4 plus 1, and just make sure it does equal 2. Let me bring Desmos up. I'll show you. So like just type it all in, and you can just check and make sure it works.
So let's see, if I go in here to my functions menu, and I find the one I need with the little base, I got log base three of two times four plus one, and then that does equal two. So I've checked and made sure that does work out. All right, let's do number four. We have log solve for x and we have three logs. So we can't do anything until we combine these two that are on the same side. So using our log properties, I see they're adding together. So I need to multiply and say that's log of x times x plus two on that side equals log of x squared minus x plus seven on the other side. And then I can notice I have log on one side and log on the other side, and I don't have anything extra added or subtracted to them, so I'm allowed to cancel those out and then bring down what's left. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the x, and that gives me x squared plus two x equals x squared minus x plus seven. And then if I subtract x squared, Notice that would cancel out because there's one on each side, so those go away. Then I'm just left with 2x equals negative x plus 7. So I can add x to both sides, and then I get 3x equals 7. And then divide by 3, and I'm just going to leave it as 7 thirds because there's no reason to get a decimal. It's fine to leave it improper. And then if you wanted to check your answer, you could just plug in that. It just takes a little bit of typing to get it all typed in. But everywhere there's an X, you'd want to plug in the 7 thirds and just check and make sure all that works. All right, number five. You invest 5600 into an account earning continuously compounded interest with a rate of 2.5%. If you want to have $20,000 in the account, how many years will it take to get there? Okay, so we're gonna set it up as continuously compounded interest. So that is the PERT formula. So A equals capital P, lowercase e, and then on the E we have an exponent of R times T. And then we're gonna plug everything in. So 5,600 is how much we invested. So that's our principal or our initial amount. The E is just gonna be a button in our calculator. 2.5% means we have a decimal of 0.025 for the rate. We're looking for time, so we could put T, but our calculator prefers X if we need to use our calculator. And then if we want to have $20,000 remaining. Okay, so what we can do to solve this is divide both sides by 5,600. So let's type that in, 20,000 divided by 5,600 gives me 3.57. Then the 5,600 cancels out and we have e to the 0.025x power. Then if we take natural log of both sides, natural log of e just cancels out. And we have natural log of 3.57, so we can just type that in the calculator. That's under the calculus functions. And let's type 3.57. So we get about 1.27. We can round that off. Equals 0.025x. And then we just have to divide by 0.025. Be careful not to type that in wrong. So 1.27 divided by 0.025 leaves us with about 50.8 years would be our x. Now you can check your answer for this one or number four would also work this way. You can type in any equation by typing in y equals what's on the left. So I have 20,000 on the left. And then y equals what's on the right. So that was 5,600. Then I have a little e. And in parenthesis, in my exponent, I have 0.025x. But then I can't see it on the graph because 20,000 is way outside of my window. So I need to change my window and really just change that y maximum to be more like that largest number that I have in my function. 
and then I can scroll over and find it and notice I get pretty much the same thing. It's just a slight difference from the rounding that we did. And I just want to go back to number four real quick and show you that that seven thirds would be pretty tough to type all that in. So what you can do is type in y equals what's on the left. So y equals, let me find log. It didn't have a base other than 10, so we can just put the regular log. Log of x plus 2 plus log of x, on, and that's in one equation. Then in the next line, you've got to put the what's on the right. So I need to go down to log of x squared minus x plus 7. Just like it looks. So y equals the left. Ooh, I need an equal sign. And y equals what's on the right. And then you can find where those touch. And notice 2.33 is the same answer as 7 thirds. Because if we put 7 thirds back as a decimal, then that's what we would get. Okay. So that is it for practice quiz 8.